You have to forgive my voice for doing thing considering I just at uh, the school on Tuesday the 22nd of November 2022. Uh, Red Superman Year 1. Despite the fact that Frank Miller seemingly does not like Superman at all, I thought Superman Year 1 was good. I know it seems like I've been sipping for him recently. I've just like everything that he wrote that I've read recently. There might have been some things that he did that I didn't like. I just can't think of anything right now. Because other than his Dark Knight stuff, the only thing I've read is the first volume of Sin City. Which I also like. Um, also, excuse me, I, I know it sounds like a fart there, but it was my stomach. It's weird. Um, I did some research, and it's getting a bit complicated when it comes to Dark Knight Returns, which DC have said that that takes place on Earth-31. So, Batman Year One is canon to Dark Knight Returns. Year One takes place in Earth-31. But... At the same time that they made that they made year one, in Earth One, Batman they made Earth they made Year Two. And in Earth One Detective Comics, they also made Year Three. Or vice versa. Problem is that Earth Two and Three are considered canon to the Dark Knight Returns, which means that it's not Year Two and Three take place in both Earth-1 and Earth-31 at the same time, somehow. <clears throat> Additionally, because Year-1 is canon, so was The Long Halloween, because The Long Halloween was a sequel to Earth-1, or Year-1, I mean. Um, despite the fact that it was written by Jeff Gep Loeb instead of Frank Miller. And also Dark Victory is canon as well. And there's also uh like a two sequels to Dark Victory, but I haven't read those. So the plan is I'm gonna read Dark Knight 4. Uh I think it's called The Golden Child. <laughs> then I'll do the sequels to Dark Victory. Then I'll do Years 2 and 3. And I was looking back on my reviews and <clears throat> like I did a review for Under the Red Hood. I looked up what actually is in Under the Red Hood and it turns out Under the Red Hood is an Earth One story that takes place within the issues of Batman. It's not like it like The Dark Knight Returns is its own series. Whereas Under the Red Hood takes place within is like issue six hundred and forty to six hundred and forty five of Earth One Batman. It's not those actual numbers. That's just me, you know, making it easier to understand. <clears throat> um, I did a review from the Reddit, so it's because of this mistake that I'm actually going to change the way that the comic reviews are done. So, like, I didn't do a review for the Spider Woman crossover because I collected issues of things that I've already done reviews for. So, I think the way that I'm going to do the reviews now is that it'll be like a TV show. I'll do the initial review and a final review. But for something that comes along with Under the Red Hood, which contains issues of something big like Batman, like the, the pre-Flashpoint Batman, I'm going to do individual reviews for those. So, Under the Red Hood, Hush, well, well I've already read Hush. And anything like that that comes along. Because there there will be more because of what's coming up that will just take a while. Also, I was reading another book, which I'm just going to say it's Marvel. The reason I'm reading this book is because this book crosses over with Spider-Gwen. 
and by issue five or six, it actually connects to Civil War two. I never read Civil War two, and I also never read Civil War one. So I'm like, okay, now I gotta read the Civil War stuff. So I was gonna research it. So to read Civil War one, you need to read Avengers Disassembled, which is what I'm currently doing. It's five or six issues of four, two issues of Iron Man. And a couple things after that, which I don't remember right now. Then there's also stuff like House of, House of M and something else. Then you can get to Civil War 1. I don't know about Civil War 2 yet because I'll read 1, then research 2, and do 2. Anyway, moving image went fine. Although, problem is that I'm running out of things to do. I'm red most of the day, like I did back in like October. Because... Currently, what we're supposed to be focusing on is the experimental, which technically I've done, but I've only done 22 seconds of. And also the quality isn't that good, and I, I can't edit it. And I just don't have the balls to ask the teacher what I, what I could do. Um, and if I eventually, hopefully, get the balls to ask her and I ask her, and she says that, you know, I need more. I don't have much I can do. Like, I, I can do a high angle shot, low angle shot, and free and free a foreground object. That's it. I can't think about anything else. <clears throat> um, in mentoring, the teacher was busy dealing with another student who was sent out of class. I don't know why. I didn't explain why. It's not my business. I should say, okay. So is it fine if we meet on Thursday at lunch instead of today? Because I'm busy dealing with this student. That's fine. And instead of actually leaving, we just talked about films. Which, I love that. That was great. Anyway. <coughs> Black Dynamite. Universally positive ratings, I watch on ITV Hub. Sorry, ITVX. That's the wrong thing. Michael J. White. Cedric, you're... I don't know how you pronounce his last name. Don't even hear in the background, but there's a sound. It's like it's oil going through like the pipes and all throughout the house, but I could it could just be my my iron brew fizzling, but it sounds lighter than that would. Anyway, it's good, but I think the show is better by miles. Gone baby gone universally positive ratings I watch on ITVX. Casey Affleck, Ed Harris, Morgan Freeman. Amy Ryan, Michelle Monaghan, which is she from Blue Bloods? Apparently not, I don't know her then. Hmm. Who am I thinking of then? <clears throat> Titus Welfer, Michael Kenneth Williams, Mark Margolis. April Bulby. It had its moments, but overall, nah. I have to leave in seven minutes. Well, not seven minutes. It's 13, but I'm going to start getting dressed in seven minutes. This Twitter has a 13 past 6 p.m. <clears throat> Why are we talking about the Trump White House? Trump left the White House almost two years ago. Well, let me do the top thing first. For folks, special digital cover, Naomi Biden 
the eldest granddaughter of President Biden and First Lady Dr. Jill Biden, opens up about planning a White House wedding and the details, no matter how small, that made it a spectacular family affair. White House press secretary on November 18th. They have decided to make this wedding private. It's a family event. It is, and we're going to respect Naomi and Peter's wishes. I'm reporting in October about Vogue being tapped to cover this, and I was waved off. Official explanation wasn't there was wasn't there they there the day off. <clears throat> All right, I'm I'm being the this wasn't this was worded correctly. I'm just dumb. Loophole equals family staged a wedding at the White House shoot beforehand. Private per press secretary equals <coughs> not for the White House press corps. I spent four years covering the Trump White House and two years covering the Biden White House. What's fascinating is the ways is that they both fly, albeit in very different ways. Trump's team was shameless, whereas Biden's team is too cute by half. If you believe there's a comparison between Trump's White House and Biden's White House where it comes to lying, then you're a liar. So are you saying that Biden and Biden's White House has never lied ever? Really? Hold on, let me, let me close this bag over. Just so these stay fresh. Alright, I talked about while I was doing that. I shouldn't have, because you know, I'm going to be able to hear it. Just so they stay fresh. Um, I was eating crisps while. Because I'd take a break. Whoops. Um, eating crisps and like. It might be like eating crisps or something. And it like, I don't know if it's lodged in between my teeth or it was lodged, it got out, but it has left a gap. Like, I know obviously there already is a gap between your teeth, but a bigger gap than usual. Like, I have that right now and it's, it's annoying. Anyway. Last night, Ian Wright, he had his say on being here. Last night, Ian Wright... He had his say on being here, and he said he felt quite conflicted. I just wondered how you feel, Gary. Um, I, I don't feel conflicted. Um, I've been coming over to the Middle East for 20 years and to Southeast Asia. I've had sporting um, business and commercial relationships with these parts of the world for a long, long time. And the fact that FIFA have awarded a, a World Cup to Qatar in the last few weeks, that's come under huge scrutiny. I accept that position. Um, awarded? I mean, I can't think of a of a better word, but it's just weird to say a word like that. Like, like it's a reward for doing something, killing gays, I guess. <laughs> um, but actually, a better word would be shows, shoes. They shows having guitar. They didn't award it to to guitar. Shouldn't you know? I'm there to be shot at, and people have criticised me heavily. They've criticised criticised that. Also, I get that I'm saying guitar instead of Qatar. I apologise. Colleagues uh, on the BBC yesterday for being over here. Um, but the reality of it is, <laughs> my view on it is per quite simply that, you know, I detest uh, workers' rights abuses. I hate the idea of people not being paid enough money, the people who are working in poor conditions, uh, the idea of people not having good accommodation, the fact that women's rights um, aren't adhered to, or that there are human rights abuses. I can't stand it. But I also have relationships in this part of the world and I've done for many, many years. And those relationships are long-standing. Those relationships are long-standing in our country with the UK. If you think about the fact that we buy most of our energy from the Middle East, that they own our banks, that the royal family have relationships with the Middle East, both sporting and charitable. You think about our government, our political parties have relationships with the Middle East. They own London Heathrow Airport, they own London Stock Exchange. And the fact of the matter is, it's football. The relationship that our government has with the Middle East is... The Americans went to the Middle East in the 80s uh, to help fight against the Soviets. And then they got rid of the Soviets. But the Americans stayed in the Middle East. And Osama bin Laden didn't like that because he's a whiny prick. So he blew up the Twin Towers. And George Bush, because of that, and possibly... You can't take me down because I've said possibly. 
decided to invade the Middle East for oil. Um, and his best mate, Tony Blair, wanted to tag along as well. That is the relationship that our government has had with the Middle East. That's actually brought the scrutiny and football tournaments that have brought the scrutiny on these challenges that exist in this part of the world and the way in which these things happen. And from my point of view, I'm, I'm happy for football to front that up. You know, if Prince William doesn't want to come to this tournament, but he's OK with not coming to the tournament, but his father takes, if you like, charitable donations, that's fine. If the political uh, MPs don't want to come over here, but they're happy to take money from them in, in, in our country for their political parties, that's fine with me. But I always see it as football and ex-football players who seem to be coming under criticism. And from my point of view, I have to say that I think that football stands up Football players stand up. We've got another issue today with the one love armband with Harry Kane, these political and social issues, which I'm absolutely delighted to talk about. I think there's a serious conversation to be had. Because my point always is, should there be a World Cup in all parts of the world? Should there be a World Cup in the Middle East? Should there be a World Cup in Arab countries? There absolutely should be. And if we're going to do that, then we are going to come across some of these issues that exist in these parts of the world where we don't agree with them. But can you not enjoy a sporting tournament and come over and challenge the system over here, but also bring football to different parts of the world and try and advance things and impact things. And I will continue to keep coming to this part of the world. I'll continue to go, keep going to uh, parts of Southeast Asia. Um, other sectors like energy sectors, um, our Air Force, our banks, our political parties, they seem to want to shy away from their existing relationships that they have with this part of the world. But football will get the scrutiny. Football will be the one that gets penalised for it. And I personally have been hammered over this last few weeks. And that's fine, but I'm happy to stand up and debate it because I think there's a serious conversation about where, where sporting competitions should be held, and I believe they strongly should be held in the Middle East. <clears throat> he could have challenged the system while just covering the tournament by TV, yet he chose to take a big fat check from the Qataris. The shut up already and sick of talking about the games, you sanctimonious grandstanding drivel is beyond obnoxious. <clears throat> AP fires hoarder behind false word claim and Russian missile struck Poland. Finally. Talking crypto and altruism with SBF. Sam Harris promoted serial low life and crypto scammer SBF in addition to being a hysteric and hypochondriac who sells a meditation app. Sam is low life promoter of scammers and con artists. This now a security guard refusing to let me into the stadium for USA Wales. You have to change your, your shirt. It's not allowed. As a Qatari, I'm proud of what happened. I don't know when <clears throat> all the Westerners realise that their values aren't universal. There are other cultures with different values that should be equally respected. Let's not forget that the West is not the spokesperson for humanity. App Store gatekeepers, Apple, Google Pay, and Amazon could all decide that the platform Twitter itself following the owner Elon's commitment to free speech warning report. But he's not committed to free speech, is he? Because this is what convinces people to accept, to legitimize total biometric surveillance. If we want to stop this epidemic, we need not just to monitor people, we need to monitor what's happening under their skin. What we have seen so far, it's corporations and governments collecting data about where we go, who we meet, what movies we watch. The next phase is the surveillance going under our skin. We now see mass... Surveil these nuts. ...surveillance systems established even in democratic countries, which previously rejected them, and we also see a change in the nature of surveillance. Previously, surveillance was mainly above the skin. Now it's going under the skin. Governments want to know not just where we go or who we meet. Above all, they want to know what is happening under our skin. What's our body temperature? They want to know what's happening under our skin. Hmm. I wonder... Who else wanted to know what was happening under her skin? That's right, Jeffrey Dahmer! What's our blood pressure? What, what is our medical condition? Now humans are developing 
even bigger powers than ever before. We are really acquiring divine powers of creation and destruction. We are really upgrading humans into gods. We are acquiring, for instance, the, the power to re-engineer life. I know that in recent years... <clears throat> I think every religion and... Like, every religion out there, and with, and also the atheists and the agnostics, and my point is everyone should be offended that you want to make humans into gods. We saw populist politicians undermining deliberately the trust that people have in important institutions like universities, like respectable media outlets. These populist politicians told people that, say, scientists are this small elite disconnected from the real people. I mean, all this story about Jesus rising from the dead and being the son of God, this is fake news. Humans are now hackable. Whoa, whoa. Whoa there. Saying fake news, Jesus rose from the dead, which I don't think he's saying that Jesus didn't rise from the dead. I think he's saying that Jesus did, just didn't exist. That, you know, the Christians have it wrong. Well, guess what? You want to say that we have it wrong? Fine. But, like, at least let us be. Animals. You know, the, the whole idea that humans have, you know, this, they, they have this soul or spirit and they have free will and nobody knows what's happening inside me. So whatever I choose, whether in the election or whether in the supermarket, this is my free will. That's over. The free will that you want to take from the common people. The elite all worship this incredibly creepy guy. Tells you everything. Good for Macedon's failing woke refugee swing, t fleeing Twitter over Elon's takeover of Turn the Hive, which seems to have a fic fictitious origin story and a 20 year old creator. Despite the obvious dangers of information gathering, tech journals are telling people to install it. The fact it's called Hive, as in Hive Mine is hilarious, like Twitter wasn't enough of an echo chamber for them. <laughs> The podcast is a political commentator person joins me to discuss the escalating absurdity of the UK migrant crisis as well as the real motive behind the environmental activist movement. Please don't block me, YouTube. This is a cave. The cave in the Palace Mountains in Bulgaria is apparently carved by hand more than 3,000 years ago and ready to settle down. Marcus would love there. Shalom. What upcoming holiday deals are you looking forward to? My dad finally got me my birthday present, so I feel like my birthday was a month and a day ago. He got me a headset. Problem is, is that the headset needs to be connected to the TV to work. And there's nowhere you can place the headset that I would be able to connect to the TV where it is because he's placed the TV up. He's placed the TV high up because it, it's like drilled into the wall. It's high up for no reason. So he's going to bring it down, hopefully tomorrow. Must not let an Alex Jones on Twitter because a personal revulsion is a million times better for free speech than Twitter and cannot let an Alex Jones on because of a committee of industry experts in con consultation with stakeholders look at best practices in assuring the help. Pretty good take, not going to lie. Nah. But I learned the code. Or in the plum. I went from being a multi-billionaire to not being able to use my Apple Pay. Four nights ago, I couldn't use my Apple Pay because somehow Adidas was able to legally go in and freeze my money. And when I see this, I think, well, if this could happen to me, this could happen to other Americans. And for what? You know, this can happen to an American that didn't even steal anything, that didn't even hurt anyone. This could just happen to you for saying the wrong idea out loud, for expressing yourself. I went from being a mo- Will not very logically verified until there's high confidence thought impersonation of a 
many times are we going to delay Elon? Hmm? We'll probably use different color tag for organizations and individuals. Hmm, yeah, I like that. But still. Bring it back, for Christ's sake. You keep on delaying it. Just don't delay it. Don't even, don't even think about it. Just do it. Mark, what's your thoughts on Elon not well letting Alex Jones back on Twitter? Curious, you know, considering you've been on them for and have your clips end with him. From a free speech standpoint, he should be allowed back, absolutely. From a business standpoint, running the risk of having the already troubled platform you just brought getting bought, getting named in lawsuits, running into literally trillions of dollars. I get it, it's crap, but I get it. Basically, there's a risk of no one having a Twitter if a guest dragged into his losses and everyone will cheer and clap while Elon gets awarded to pay 956 quadrillion. Let Elon pay 956 quadrillion. <laughs> Very much a damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of situation here. That's exactly it. He chose the way that lets people keep their platform safe. It was pretty much a trolley problem. <laughs> So business more important than free speech? It's basically a trolley problem. Millions of people have large platforms on Twitter they have built and created for years so that their ideas can reach an audience and laugh free speech. But you run the risk of having all that shut down with bogus lawsuits for one guy. It's a fucking shite state of affairs. I want Alex back. He should be back. But ironically, the cost might be the free speech and reach of millions of people if Twitter gets shut down. Guys and Carl's been brought back recently. Hell, it's probably before he started Lotus Eaters. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> and you know what? I'm also going to do Carl's tweets from now on every day. But I'm not going to do all these. I'll, I'll, like, I'll, I'll do the top one. I'll, I'll, I'll do, the, do the start one and then. Yeah, actually, I can't. Hold on. Right. Go here. Refresh. I'll read this first. Open letter to Elon. Don't do it, Elon. I don't think it sticks. <laughs> Thank you for moving back to the life, Elon. Five years in exile is a long time. A lot has changed. We are in a different world now. I'm a different man. Things will be different, but hopefully better. The tide may be turning. Yeah, I saw when I was scrolling down to get to where it was. I uh, noticed that uh, Marjorie tweeted Carl, and I was like, well, I thought it was kind of found. Hmm. Please don't be copyrighted. Darkness took me. Okay, that's just a clip from Lord of the Rings. Like, that's it. Excuse me, that's it. Who the fuck left the world when this filthy angle and snuck back in? You think it's funny that my name is stuck as giant penis? I do. And I'm tired of pretending it's not. Cease. Uh-huh, giant pee, pee got a tiny girl pregnant, uh-huh. Bruh. 